So, hello, my name is Chris Wall, Chief Technologist at Rubrik. I love doing that for the videos. I'm going to cover Polaris, our most recent announcement. And I also, just for giggles, I brought, these are so cute, little Rubrik onesies. Aww. Look at that. An announcement, Chris? Look at that. No. <laughs> No, no. I was like, we just had an announcement yesterday. That's a different announcement. You're never but man, ah, I wish I had. I wish I had a little baby that could fit it in. So I thought about it. No, no. I'll let you use your imagination. I'm sure some Photoshop experts out there can can have some fun with that. Wait, hold that up man, again. Let's get it it. <laughs> moving, moving right along for those playing the at home game. All right. So. Uh, as far as the uh, the game of life that we're playing here, we're at number four, Polaris. That's the, the section I'll be talking about. What I thought was cool as I was listening to the rest of my team present uh, was, you know, when we're talking about the integration, that could be the physical appliance, it could be cloud cluster. You know, the, the idea behind basically all these different points on the chart is that it doesn't matter how you deploy rubric, they're all perfectly valid, right? Because the software is the same. Uh, so let's talk about Polaris. Uh, the announcement came out yesterday as to what this is. I wanted to go a little bit deeper. This is, you're gonna be the first time seeing this in the public. We've not actually demoed this beyond videos and little screenshots and whatnot. But I talked about it earlier. I just want to dive a little bit deeper into what it is and then I'll show you. Uh, so again, we've got that, you've got the layer down here, this kind of bottom layer of all the instances of rubric that you've deployed. And that's protecting virtual machines and applications and physical servers and whatnot. And it's typically spread, like I said earlier, across multiple data centers, perhaps some cloud environments, et cetera. And Polaris is a software as a service offering that can connect into all those data points uh, and grab the metadata via the APIs. The same ones that we keep kind of, you know, rah, rah, we keep harping on that a bit because they're truly the glue that holds everything together. They are what makes it all the magic actually happen. So they're able to siphon all that data up and give you that unified system of record because you can see globally where this artifact lives. And then we consume it, right? I'm actually gonna show you the first offering that we have from a data management application perspective on that. The use cases though for SaaS, cause it came up a few times and I was delighted enough to actually help build out this particular slide. Uh, we, because, because SaaS in and of itself, I don't think is that interesting. I think it's more around like what we're doing with it and why uh, it's so interesting with rubric is one, I don't wanna manage things all that much. I kinda want zero infrastructure. I just wanna be able to go quickly. And if you look at our CDM product, the cloud data management product, it's usually within one hour from the point it's in a box, it's actually taking backups. Recently had a customer, was at Portland. He's like, well, it took three hours because I had a network issue and I had to, you know, he had a switch issue, something like that, and get some code level, but hours, right? Not weeks or something like that. So this also gets you up really quickly. And I think the really most sticky and valuable part is it allows you to start taking all that unstructured data, all the files and folders and bits and pieces that are floating out kind of across the ether and unify that. Right? It doesn't just have to focus on structured data. It's not like when you look at MuleSoft's acquisition by Salesforce, right? That's really just a way that we can continue to tie in structured data and make it available to you via force.com as an example. When we look at all the unstructured data, that's, that could be a challenge, right? So that's where I feel like being able to kind of tether around all that unstructured data and offer a lot of use cases on top of it is pretty valuable. I won't read the rest, right? So let's go into our first application, the data management application called Polaris GPS, like your navigation system. GPS's role in life is kind of three things from a major perspective. It's the command and control data management application that Rubrik itself has built because we're gonna also offer the Polaris SaaS APIs that are reaching northbound to third party. So we built this particular one. It allows you to kind of look C, control, command across all of the rubric instances. So I've got an example here like behavior analysis, there could be compliance, regulatory reasons that you're looking to see where the data lives, capacity planning, monitoring, reporting. Uh, Marcus showed you all the different APIs to get like IO and throughput and, and you know, usage from the rubric instances. So all that can bubble up here. Maybe you're looking at where can I actually offer better optimization for performance based on where the application lives today right, or actually how it's growing and consuming public cloud resources, private resources, et cetera. So I think of it as like the what if box. You know, what if I made these changes? How would they look? Am I making sure that I'm compliant? Am I meeting my regulatory requirements, et cetera? Cool. Does that sound like fun things to do? Interesting, I don't know. It's the end of the day, I know everybody well, scrambled. Fun's that. a strong word. It's not fun, like regulations and compliance, that's fun. Yeah, Woo. so. If, if, on Justin's that, got a question. Yeah, a question on that. So there's GPS, knowing where my data is and compliance are interesting in GDPR type context. So I, for example, data that is created and lived in Germany and is not allowed to leave Germany. 
Mm -hmm. Would I be able to A, create controls that do that and B, verify that that's actually happening with data that's being backed up? Well, part of the, the architectural integrity around rubric cloud data management <coughs> is basically that. It's saying, I have an SLA. Part of this SLA is data will live on-premises with the appliance and only go to a sovereign cloud provider or colo of my choice. Mm. And then once I assign that policy or that SLA domain to the objects, I would then be able to also look at the visibility or the compliance visibility around that SLA in Polaris mm. to make sure that's actually happening or to offer it as an audit trail. Yeah, I want to address GDPR specifically on that for legal reasons, but that's the thought. No, and that's that's really what it was, is that yeah. when the auditors come knocking and say, can you sh pr show me, yeah. prove that you are doing this, I can give them a report that says, yes, well, the Polaris rubric report says, this is what we have defined the SLAs and we are compliant with those SLAs. And the auditors go, tick, and then we get on with our lives. And that's uh, honestly like SLA compliance versus auditing is something that has been in the product since 1.x. You know, it's it's really been a focus from the original days to make sure we can do that. So okay. how does it treat non-rubric sites that are managed by rubric, AKA the, what Ken showed, let's say I don't have any rubric, virtual rubric instances in AWS, but I'm managing EBS through rubric. Do Is that integrated at that point and it identifies these AWS snapshots as uh, data as part of my entire data uh, inventory for GPS. Absolutely, yeah, the, the actual placement of the rubric software and what it's providing protection for is abstracted because at that point, if I were to go to the earlier, oops, how do I go backwards? Oh, there's a backwards button. Um, it would be in the data center and what it's actually talking to is relevant because Polaris would be talking through a secure channel to the instance of CDM in the data center. And then we'd be able to bubble up all the metadata around what it's protecting. So this is again why the metadata is so key. Absolutely. So I'll, I'll go into a quick demo. I know there's like a, there we go, the show me. I'll have my Mac expert switch things over because it hurts my skin to touch an Apple device. <laughs> so it burns a little bit. There we go. Burn. Yeah, it burns. <laughs> all right. So this is the dashboard. Every customer would get their own unique URL. This is the sales engineering one that I'm using right now. Uh, and I'm gonna use my credentials here. I don't have the fancy password safe or anything because it's not my laptop and I don't want Rebecca knowing my password. Too late. Oh, no, don't save, never save. save never save. <laughs> eject, eject. <laughs> So, yeah. <laughs> uh, so I'll, I'll, I'll go back, we'll, we'll zoom out first. The idea behind Polaris first and foremost is that everywhere you deploy an instance of our software, you have a lot of visibility and control into it. And this is actually pulling from, I think Amsterdam, uh, somewhere around Austin, locally here in Santa Clara, and I think we got another one in Seattle, right? And it doesn't matter if these are cloud clusters, if these are virtual appliances, physical appliances, again, the software is the same across all of them. So I get this kind of bird's eye, you know, war room view, if you will of how much, uh, how, how much success am I having with the product? Are there pain <coughs> points? Are there issues that I should be going after? And also the trends. I don't know if you can see we're trending downwards or upwards as far as success versus failure. And that gives you that macro level view so that you can start either assigning you know, some, some effort or some focus around something as far as like I'm running out of capacity, we're having a bunch of failed backup attempts, what's going on there. And in this case, we actually introduce a few things just to keep it lively. If everything's successful, it's kind of boring. Like we have a, one instance here where we're trying to back up a virtual machine that, that it's an NSX controller. So we know that's gonna fail and it helps show you kind of what that would look like and how to triage that. But across all the backup replication and archive tests, you can see them in this view. Uh, and you can also drill down further. So I can get, if I'm not interested in kind of the C-suite dashboard, if you will, I can drill down a little further and I can look at, well, how are all my instances or clusters of rubric performing? What are they doing? And I can continue to drill down deeper. This might be your global knock is using something like this. It may be that you have a distributed operations team or what I hope is happening is that you're offering this to both the dev and the ops side, and that together you're figuring out what instances are being deployed, such as AWS instances, virtual machines, all that kind of jazz. And you're putting them, you're giving them access kind of at this layer so that you can combine your architectural, you know, kind of efforts into one. But we can see here, I've got labs across the Americas. I've got a next gen environment. I've got a cloud cluster, cluster rather, uh, running in Azure. And all of those can be drilled into further so that I can see, okay, 
Now I'm at the kind of micro level. How is this particular cluster performing? What's specifically going on? And what I think is kind of important, especially for the ops team and people that have to, as Ken said, you know, it's my problem to deal with state. I can also see specifically how much runway I have. Because one thing I've always liked about Rubrics cloud data management software is it tends to give things in a business term when it comes to capacity planning, such as you have 100 days left to make a choice. You know, either expand the Rubrics cluster or start, you know, back up less, hold less data, put more in the cloud, you know, whatever it is, which I don't know how many times I've worked with a product and it's like, you have 27 terabytes left. Like, well, what does that mean? I, I don't know. I want to know, like, you know, you know the data, trend it for me and tell me specifically how many days left until that fails, you know? Uh, so you can get that kind of data here. And there's even a, you know, if, if you absolutely want to go visit the local cluster instance itself, the view cluster button will drill you down into the regular dashboard, if you will. So you can kind of egress from Polaris and enter the local site in case you want to actually, you know, do something with that configuration, add a node, that kind of jazz. What's Question. the, what's the uh, compliance, out of compliance? I noticed on the, you have it here in this cluster, but even if you went up to the higher level, yeah. what's it based off of? Yeah, it's all drillable. Uh, so I'll just, I'll just click to go deeper and by default, we'll go ahead and say, uh, past 24 hours for that cluster. Compliance is all driven off the SLA domains that you create. Okay. And so if I say I want, uh, I think the earlier example was a 12 hour backup for seven days and I miss that for some reason, because we're going to keep trying to make sure that RPO is realistic and hit that. If we can't hit it, then we'll tell you there was an issue. Here's what the issue is. This is no longer considered in compliance for the terms of the SLA. So once I reach day eight and I no longer have to keep 12 hours every, every day for, for yeah. seven days, now I'll be back in compliance. It's just letting me know I missed that. But it's a... It's an on or off flag in compliance or out of compliance. Yeah. As opposed to almost a, even if you want to step further, of like a stoplight chart, right? Yeah. There are some things that. Sort of out of compliance? <laughs> well, well, I'm thinking, you know. Only a little you bit miss, pregnant? If you, oh. yeah. <laughs> You're going back to that onesie. Is it, is it, yeah. Where the onesie go? Yeah, there's the onesie. <laughs> Well, that's the thing about compliance. It's like you either are or you're not. It's well, like, oh, you're, you're, you're heading mostly towards compliant. Our compliance. It's, it's only a little bit illegal. No, I, <laughs> see, I guess the, the thing is, I look at the, at the rules that you set up for backup. Yeah. Some of those are based on compliance requirements. Some of them are not. Yeah. Some of them are based on business requirements. Or this is what I think. I mean, there's a lot of I think sure. this would be best. The problem is the... I think this would be best, and we have a compliance requirement to ensure that this happens, are bulked together using this model. I'll put it right? this way, just for Whereas just if the sake were, of running out of time. If uh, there was like a stoplight chart, it would at least give you some, some clarity around, okay, the red things yeah. are a real problem. The yellow, yellow ones either, eh, you know, if you can get to it and solve it, great, or it might be something that if you don't fix it, it's going to become red. You know, certainly. so it kind of gives you a... Heads up, as opposed to that binary on or off. Yeah, I'll say from a Polaris perspective, it is SaaS. It's pretty easy to push out new features and whatnot and, and become iterative. And this is the early access version of the, of the product. But also within Rubrics CDM, the cloud data management software itself, there are customers that feel the same way. And they have reports that are generated that are custom to what their environment requires. Because I, I get it, maybe you know, I'm actually required to keep 24 hours of data and I've got it set to every six hours. And yeah, it's out of compliance, but not for me. I'm right. just being aggressive. That would be an example where after I have the report run, I'm really just looking for anything after a day that's missing it. And that may be a yellow in your case. Right. Yeah. So, so just you'll, to, have, you'll have it done this afternoon? Do it right now, yeah. I, I don't know how to code this stuff. Yeah, that's, it's not in PowerShell, so I'm kind of I'm kind of SOL. <laughs> and you're on a Mac. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's like the triple threat here. And I've got a onesie on my knee. Um, so, so there is that. And then also, if I don't want to use the can reports, if I go to the reports section, and then I'll close it down from there, uh, you can generate custom reports of any type. We automatically categorize them on the left to, is it about the compliance around policy? Is it around the protection status? Are we able to back up this particular object? And this all is irrelevant as far as what the object is. There's no care about oh, well, you know, databases are one way and, and virtual machines another way. No, all, all objects are treated the same from a protection workflow. So when we start looking at protection status, that can include anything that we currently protect, right? You don't have to go in all these different hierarchy trees where, okay, the VM reports are over here, the database reports are over there, that kind of jazz. Even down to infrastructure, I always thought it was funny because we only have one report there because, like, it's infrastructure, right? Who cares? Uh, sorry, sorry, 
Sorry, engineers, you know, like, I used to care. Excuse me, yes, is Polaris GPS compatible with um, uh, the vCloud uh, services? So the neat thing there is that as long as you're deploying Rubrik uh, Cloud Data Management to protect the vCloud vApps, that will then pull into Polaris because, it, again, it's just a protected object, so we don't care what it okay. is, yeah. So good question, and the answer is yes, it's fine to have that integration there. The other thing, the thing is that we, anything we, you add will show up. We can use it uh, in real-time uh, apps because it's a RESTful API. Yeah, yeah, you can query this a as much as you want, okay. as much as you care to, <laughs> if you will. So that's just kind of a sneak peek. I, I know we're, we're basically hitting the time block here of what it looks like uh, as you go in. I'll just peek into activities real quick. You can also drill in and see what do the successes look like, what do the failures look like, kind of the, the ops model of looking at the activity log, just so you can see who's logging in, what are they doing, what is the system doing. You can really drill into it at this layer, because you might want to correlate that to some kind of systemic issue. You can see, okay, everything in the West Coast is failing because I've lost my you know, internet pipe or something like that, or that data center had a failure because the sand crushed, got crushed, I don't know, whatever that might be. So I will, how do you make it slide? Yeah, there we go. <laughs> I can get up. Yeah. You're, you're a great friend, appreciate it. So there's the demo. Uh, just from a summation perspective, oh, I'm gonna put this onesie down, this feels weird. Uh, I it think, won't after a while. Yeah, I'm slinging it over my shoulder. I think when you look at, the, you know, the, the, if you unlock the term system of record, it's really just the authoritative source for understanding your artifacts or your data or your applications. Being able to unify that across all of the unstructured data on a SaaS platform that has open APIs, pretty sexy. There's a lot of new use cases that we can unlock with this. And GPS being our kind of command and control data management application is literally just the first application that's gonna start consuming those Polaris APIs. And we're really excited to build out more from a rubric perspective and partner with third parties that wanna consume those APIs based on your vendor relationships and kind of what our customers and, and partners are seeing out in the field. So with that, this is kind of what you saw. Hopefully it felt very cloudy and fun and, and engaging and you know we, we gave you something fun to do here. Uh, don't back up, go forward. Thank you very much.